Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards, the video series where we take a strategic in-depth look at various cards in the board game Dominion. Today we are looking at Merchant Ship. This is a five cost action and duration card from Seaside and it says now and at the start of your next turn plus two coins. Now we looked at duration cards generically in the Caravan video so if you want to know a bit more about duration cards then you should check out that video too. So your first impressions when you look at Merchant Ship, uh, it appears to be a terminal that gives you four money, except it splits that money across two turns. In practice, it's more like a terminal silver this turn and two poachers or merchants on the next turn. Now, you might think if you have two of them and you draw your deck each turn, alternating the turns in which you play them, then that sort of is like spending one action every turn to end up with four money. Um, in order to get that, though, you do need to spend ten money and two buys, and that's more expensive than platinum for less money, and you also have to spend an action. Platinum is a nine-cost treasure that, um, in prosperity, it gives you five money. Uh, obviously, it's a very powerful card, platinum, so maybe this comparison sounds a little bit unfair, because uh, you obviously you can buy five one turn and five the other but you know it's not looking great for merchant ship based on that right it's worse than a standard treasure that one of the expansions adds um in reality um merchant ship is a very very weak card it is in the bottom five percent of all cards according to recent community rankings out of every card in dominion uh in the bottom five percent that's really really low for a card um, it is really bad economic payload for engines and is usually going to be worse than gold. Typically you want effects right now and all merchant ship does is give you money and so do the basic treasures and gold. It's a little bit more expensive but it gives you more money right now. It gives you more money each turn as well if you can draw it. So when we talk about an engine I'm talking about the sort of deck where you are um, drawing your whole deck each turn basically so you know you're adding in a stock card it's giving you three money whereas for merchant ship it's only giving you two but in addition to that if you want to add more terminals to your deck then you have to pay what i call the terminal tax which is that you've got to buy more villages to support it usually um, and if you're going to go to that effort then there's often something better you can spend the action on there are quite strong payload cards in dominion like obviously one of the strongest around is bridge uh, which is just significantly better than merchant ship by a massive amount uh, in addition to that, Merchant Ship costs 5. This is a very competitive price point. I've talked about this a lot in these videos, but you've really got to have a good card at 5. And Merchant Ship, just very, very weak compared to a lot of 5s. There's usually something better you want to buy when you've got 5 money. So what about non-engine strategies like Big Money, for example? Well, Big Money is usually better served by a strong draw card. Uh, that's just going to do better than Merchant Ship. It's going to cycle you through your deck quicker. It's going to give you more money on those particular turns. You hit the higher price points a lot quicker. Um, so Merchant Ship's pretty bad for that too. So when is it actually good? Well, it's got two main use cases in my opinion. Uh, number one is that you really want money in the form of an action card uh, rather than a treasure. And number two is that there is no draw at all and basically there's nothing else that's better going on. Um, the merchant ship sort of comes to its own when you have basically no draw in the deck. Uh, so even in these situations, merchant ships, ship sorry, is still pretty poor value for money. And honestly, there are cheaper cards that only cost like four or even three that are usually going to be better than merchant ship, especially as you come to the later expansions. So let's look at that first bullet point, first of all. So... Sometimes you really want money in action card form. So I've just listed some examples here. We have gone through some of these in previous videos. Uh, festival library decks. Obviously, Festival is a better card to add to a Festival library deck than Merchant Ship. However, when the Festivals run out and you need even more money, Merchant Ship's all right there. You know, you've got plenty of actions to spare because you've got all these Festivals and it's fine that Merchant Ship is a stock card, it's just giving you money that gets out of the way, and then you can play library and draw more. So it's pretty good for something like that. Double Tactician decks, they are they want no treasures at all, so they need another form of money, and sometimes you'll do whatever it takes to get other forms of money so that you can take advantage of the massive amount of draw you get from Tactician. A Merchant Ship can do that. 
uh, minion decks as well. They don't really like money in terminal form, but sometimes it works, and Merchant Ship can do that. Action cards can be throned, so throne room and its variants. Sometimes, if you've just got plenty of thrones around, you might be better off just adding it in some sort of action form. Vineyards from Alchemy, that is a victory card that wants more actions in your deck. You'd rather add actions instead of treasures. And it might be that having bonus actions is really abundant, so the fact that this is terminal just doesn't matter. So Champion is the obvious one that makes all cards non-terminal. Uh, and there is Academy as well, but you've also got um, Capitalism works with this. There, there's there's plenty of examples. Um, I haven't listed them all. And there's more than what's listed here, the reasons why you might want action cards. And to look at that other second point, uh, what if you have no draw at all? So there's a type of deck that we call a slog. Those are decks that just really slowly churn through the deck and just add stuff in. And usually they start adding victory cards early and often. Uh, they, those can work with Merchant Ship. So the thing is, is in those sorts of decks, the value of drawing a card is usually going to be less than two money. So, you know, Merchant Ship's doing all right. If you, if you think that the... Um, on the second turn, it's kind of like getting a free card draw that draws a silver, right? You just have two money and you've still got a five card hand. Um, so it's giving you slightly better than something like, say, Caravan would. Um, it's also less likely to miss the shuffle as a duration card because you're going really slowly through your shuffle. And in that case, you know, buying a merchant ship actually has added four money to that particular shuffle if it doesn't miss. Um, compare and contrast like an engine where every turn it can only ever give you two. But um, if you care about the total amount of money available during the entirety of your shuffle and you get to basically have two turns where you're using merchant ship within that shuffle, then, you know, it has actually added full money. So this is the other sort of situation where I'd use it. Um, in this scenario, I said here, I consider it to be slightly better than getting two silvers for five money and one buy. Um, because the second turn is a little bit better than having a silver, and in a slog, you're normally not going to get terminal collision because you don't have that many actions. Um, now, is it good in a slog to get two silvers for five? Uh, it's all right, you know. So, as you can see here, I don't sound terribly enthused by merchant ship, even in this sort of deck. Um, again, there might actually be something better, but honestly, if there's really nothing going on in a kingdom at all, um, then merchant ship. It works, right? But but this is the hallmark of weak cards, right? When I say that there's nothing happening in a kingdom, that means every other card is basically barely doing anything for you. That's a, that's a weak kingdom, and every card in Dominion has its day, right? No card is so weak that you can't find some example kingdom that is so incredibly weak that that particular card doesn't shine, right? And that's true of basically every card in Dominion, and Merchant Ship is no exception, but it's just bad card right like it's it has very little use case in general um it's just very weak and so many other cards in the game just do better than it um, and that's really it for the strategy advice of merchant ship there's not a lot to talk about and that is because it is just a very basic um money bonus that it's giving you that's probably the most vanilla type of card just gives you money well so do the basic treasures right so what is there left to say that we haven't talked about before and the answer is well barely anything really so what we are going to do now is we are going to head over to the online client and we are going to generate some kingdoms with merchant ship and we are going to see how well it does in those kingdoms so here we have Ambassador and Trading Post as thinning. Um, there is no village. That's a real problem. we got a lot of terminals here. And there is no village. Now, there is an Ambassador. Um, I feel like you'd still use Ambassador, even though this is basically some kind of... Well, there's not even draw, is there? There's no draw and there's no village. Well, this is terrible. Um... Is merchant ship good here? I still think we'd want to ambassador. Um, it's just good to just throw a load of bad cards into your opponent. And honestly, we might then go for treasure map. Uh, we get thin with ambassador and we were going to buy some treasures and then we just throw a load of golds into our deck. Are we at risk of a pirate ship in this kind of deck? Right, This is a very weak board and pirate ship might be valuable. Um... How good is Pirate Ship? Well, we can't 
reasonably avoid um, not having treasures. Right, there's nothing we can really do about that. Um, but does it matter if the opponent pirate ships us? Like, we are going to get rid of our treasures very quickly. We can get down to a small hand that has um, that's immune to pirate ship because it's only got five cards in it that can afford to buy a treasure map and then a second one. Like, you can have a four-card hand and then have two turns behind treasure map. Then you are at risk of losing your golds, but at that point, your opponent has been so junked that unless they're doing the same, right? Like, if they tried to go to pirate ship, that's all that's going to happen to them is that they're going to drown in junk with Ambassador. And you can probably keep... Like, if you get down to a deck that small, you could probably just buy a curse and start throwing curses at them if they didn't Ambassador. So I think you have to Ambassador. And that basically puts pirate ship... Um, non-viable, I think, um, in which case you can then just shift over to buying some treasure maps once you actually get thin, um, if that happens. Uh, if they are ambassadoring you as well, I guess you will just pick up another ambassador and you will start getting money, and you're just going to play ambassador tennis for a long time. Um, and then when someone gets ahead, they can get thin and they can just go for treasure maps. I, I think that's all you really do here. Um is merchant ship good once you've bought treasure maps? I mean, maybe. Like, maybe you could pick one up then, and it's fine, right? But some of these cards are completely useless. Like, you wouldn't really buy an embargo here. Um, and I don't even think you'd do it on a 5-2. If you get 5-2, you would... What would you do in a 5-2? I think you... Do you go trading post? I think you have to still go ambassador. Maybe trading post is fine on a 5-2. Maybe you go trading post embargo. It depends what they embargo. But otherwise, you know, you might buy merchant ship here, but it doesn't seem very good because um, you can get really thin and it's worth doing. Just ambassador is just so nasty. Um, you have to ambassador anyway. On a 4-3, I go ambassador and I probably just go silver, I guess. Or maybe even double ambassador, honestly, if I think it's going to be an ambassador war. You just open that. So merchant ship, barely. I, I can see you ignoring it. I can see maybe you would get one um, quite late. But that's just largely a strange ambassador, nothing else to do board. Uh, well, here we have ambassador again. Uh, we do have a village this time, though, with Fishing Village, and we have Draw with Nobles and Council Room. And we've got a Militia attack as well. So we can do Council Room and Militia, and we've got Fishing Village. So we've got a very good engine here. Um, we've got Ambassador to get thin. And we've got this engine, and we've got Conspirator as well for loads of money. So this is all we care about. Ambassador, Militia, Council Room, Fishing Village, Conspirator. Do we use Lurkers? Lurkers can help us just gain lots of nobles, which are quite expensive, and drawing is really easy. So we got extra buys with Council Room, so we can pick up Lurkers eventually. I really like that. Maybe we... See, I don't really care about getting militiaed early, because I'm going to be ambassadoring early on. So I wonder if, at the start here... Maybe it's just Warehouse Ambassador to get play the same Ambassador more often and get rid of those estates quickly, focus them down. Um, but I would, as soon as I want to buy a silver, I'm definitely buying Fishing Village instead. And very slowly I will get to the stage where I can start playing like Council Room and Militia. Um, I'm in no rush for Militia, honestly. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to slowly build the engine. Uh, we're never using Merchant Ship here. Um, I just don't care about it. It's it's not efficient. I'd rather have a conspirator, honestly, which is giving me money at no action cost at all, and it's also giving me some draw, so why would I ever bother with merchant ship? Um, yeah, so Lurker, Ambassador, Fishing Village, Council Room, Militia, Conspirator, basically everything except merchant ship and gardens here, so completely useless on this kingdom. I do not like merchant ship at all. Here we have Steward to Trash. We have Bazaar as a village. Do we have any draw? We have Moat as a draw, which is... Oh, we got Steward, which is going to be better than Moat, I guess. There's no attacks, so we don't really care for Moat. Um, it's fine. We've got a village. We've got Bridge. We've got Market. So we've got Bazaar, Market, Bridge, Conspirator. We've got a great way to earn a lot of money and discounts. I don't know how many bridges we're going to be able to play because we are going to have to spend some of our villages on stewards. But um, 
we do or moats, you know, some sort of turn of draw. But we can generate a decent amount of money through cantrips, basically. Uh, we really kind of want as many bazaars as we can get because we want to be able to play as many bridges as we can. But we're not going to do a single bridge mega turn. But we can get cards cheap enough that we can just throw like a whole load of conspirators and markets into our deck and then we're good to go. So we're not going to touch Merchant Ship here at all. We've got a very powerful engine. Bridge is just so much better for our actions than Merchant Ship. You know, money generation is not a problem on this board, and we have cost reduction, so we really don't care beyond those cards. So no Merchant Ship here. It is ignored entirely. Oh, you see straight away we have Ambassador again, lots of Ambassador on these kingdoms. Um, we have a village with native village, so we can get Thin, we have a village. We have Wharf as draw, which is the strongest draw card in all of Dominion, so we got an engine. Um, what are we doing with that engine? We have Bandit to gain gold, seems reasonable. Um, we got loads of buys from Wharf. We can always get, like... Do we need caravans? I don't know. And we got... Do we use Vassal? I don't think we do. I think we draw too easily and we're going to have a bunch of golds. Uh, yeah, so Ambassador. We can start picking up some villages. Um, do we use Lurker? Maybe we Ambassador. Do we open like Ambassador and Lurker and then look to get another Lurker and then we can start just lurking things as we get thin with Ambassador? We probably just do that. Um, and then eventually we shift into a pretty strong engine with Wharf and Native Village and Bandit. Um, and then we just start buying provinces. Uh, never using Merchant Ship here. Uh, don't really care. I want to spend as many actions as I can on Wharves, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we only need so many Native Villages. Like, we don't actually need a huge amount. Um, I just want all the Wharves and then enough Villages to support them. And that's it. I don't really care for anything else beyond Bandit, I suppose. Maybe eventually we could throw in a Baron if we have spare actions, like, and we still got an estate somehow. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't bother with Merchant Ship here. It doesn't seem like a very good use of my time. Um, I would rather have a gold in this kingdom, honestly. So no to Merchant Ship. And here we have Chapel for trashing and Native Village and Wharf again. So even stronger trashing. Uh, the big difference here, though, is what do we do for economy afterwards? Or for our, um, yeah, economy. Well, we've got Conspirator. That's pretty good. Um, I like Conspirator. So I guess that's it. Right, Chapel, Native Village, Wharf. Use Conspirator to generate a lot of money very quickly. And that's it. Um, and then we can also throw in some gold if we need more money after that. Um, oh, we only care about this card, so Lookout's pointless, Harbinger is pointless, Navigator is bad, Duchy Duke's never going to win against a crazy wharf engine. Uh, we don't need to upgrade anything because Chapel trashes it all. Merchant Ship is really weak. Um, yeah, so there are literally four cards we care about in this kingdom. Chapel, Native Village, Wharf, Conspirator, and I guess Silver and Gold, and that's it. Really, in province. Um, yeah, so <laughs> very powerful wharf dominating this and chapel and barely anything else really matters, I suppose. <laughs> that happens. But anyway, that was five kingdoms and merchant ship could have been ignored in all of them. There was one where maybe we did, but even then it was iffy and that was sort of the there is no draw um, deck that was available. So merchant ship, just very, very bad card. Very weak completely. Uh, it's the third weakest card in Seaside. It's not even the worst Right, so um, that's Navigator, by the way. That's that's just terrible, terrible card. Um, so, yeah, that was that was it for Merchant Ship. Short video, but there's nothing really to say about it. It's bad, and it's very, very um, vanilla with its effects, and it just isn't very good. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.